Well, in the car world, there's cars designed and focused towards drivers, and there's people that just buy cars so you can look at them, right? And I can weed out the people that want to be seen versus the actual drivers pretty quickly. You know, the guy head to toe in his Ferrari gear, or the guy wearing the racing gloves to go wherever the hell he's going. Not really important. The one thing that I've been able to notice for real serious drivers is everyday footwear like the Pelodi shoes. Because Pelodis are designed so you're not catching multiple pedals. They're designed for good pedal feel and to look good. Because if you've ever driven on a racetrack, odds are you're driving a racing shoe, but they don't really work in everyday life. That's where Pelodi comes in. That's where I'm proud to announce that they are today's video sponsor to help you look good and drive and enjoy your car more. Pelodi is an automotive lifestyle brand that adopts technology found in professional race boots and marries that with lifestyle footwear. The Avenue sneaker is handcrafted in Portugal using Italian top grain leather. This sneaker is a fan favorite and bestseller for Pelodi. It features brogue detailing and an antimicrobial moisture wicking lining and insole to keep your feet from getting stinky. The outsole features patented technology in the heel to allow for smoother movements in the pedal box along with rounded edges to prevent catching on pedal. The sole is really flexible giving an amazing pedal feel. The Avenue comes in five colorways. Check them out at Pelodi.com and use Rob15 for 15% off your order with free shipping and free returns. It's Pelodi.com or click the link in the description. Scoop yourself up a pair today. There's no looking back when you've got a nice driving shoe on your foot and this is the one I think you need in your closet. All right, everybody, Rob Ferretti here and welcome to my garage. Obviously spring is just around the corner and there's going to be some changes going on in this garage. I've done some changes to my fleet over the winter, which is mainly building up my other Supra, which will now make me more willing to sell my 98 Supra, which is sitting right up there in the lift. But here's some updates as to what's staying, what's going, what's been modified and what the plans are for the year on some of my cars. Right here, uh, we'll start here. This is the 2022 F8 Tributo Spider I bought. It's not, it's, it's a personal car, not a rental car. It's got like 750 miles on it. It didn't do much for me, right? It's a great car in that it performs really well, but that's why I went out and bought the 458 because the 458 to me was so much more engaging. And even though it doesn't perform as well, it doesn't look I mean, it looks equally as well to me and uh, personally. I wasn't feeling this car. It was definitely a better version of the 488, but my keeper is going to be the Ferrari 458. And that's why this one is going to go. But that's not also why this is going to go. This is going to go because I can't afford my new one without getting rid of this one. So I also have of my litany of cars that I have on order. I have a Ferrari SF90 that just got completed over in Modena. So now it's about getting that car over here. I've had this one for a little over a year, so it's okay. I'm, I'm not stepping on any toes with Ferrari selling it. I'm gonna sell this one and I have a gorgeous white SF90 coming in, which is gonna replace that. I fear that I may have the same concern, but with a thousand horsepower, can't really, can't really argue with that. So this is gonna go off to a new owner at some point in time in the next month or two. Then my SF90 is gonna come in and I'll show you all the cool things that that can do. Um, over here, my Corvette, speaking of white cars, this is a combination of black and white. The Corvette just got back from Felix Medina Racing, the same guy who tuned my Supra. And let me just pop the hood for you. I'll show you the key differences as to what I changed and what I'm gonna do. Honestly, I'm a little terrified to drive this when it's that cold outside because now, the car makes more horsepower. Now you'll remember when I dynoed this car, it's very unimpressive, right? Like I built this car to be practical. So running it at 12 pounds of boost or 10 pounds of boost and making 600 and change, everyone's like, well, a 600 horsepower car, whatever. So now I switched it over to flex fuel for you guys. And uh, we did the flex fuel sensor here and we've got this new fuel line. So this is your flex fuel sensor. We put bigger injectors in the car and this is now able to run flex fuel, which on corn, this one now makes 850 wheel horsepower. So 850 wheel horsepower puts this car at 1,000 horsepower, which everybody wants to see, but it blows the tires off at 600 and change. So I'm, I, and I don't know, these are still, these are good tires. I think these are, uh, um, are they 4S's? Oh, maybe I'm running 4S's. So I can run a stickier compound on it. And now with the 850 wheel horsepower, now it can really get pretty crazy. I can do some of these half mile events, some of these mile events, 
We could have gone crazier. Uh, I didn't want to throw more boost at, boost at it than that. 850 horsepower in this car. I think even at like road courses, I'm still probably going to run this at 650 or 700. And now it's got the dry sump. It should be a pretty lethal car uh, as far as anyone that wants to race. I, I'm pretty happy with how this car is shaking out over the $250,000 that I put into it. Uh, my goal for this car, and, and let me know if it's of interest, I've been in talks with uh, Misha Sheridan over at Apex at the Nürburgring to ship this car over to Germany for six weeks, eight weeks, and see, not with me driving, because every time I drive the Nürburgring, I'm still that guy who needs an instructor to be like, all right, you can stay flat around this blind turn, because I don't know any better. I'm like, I just, I drive line of sight, and driving line of sight on a track where you know you can be flat to return, you're gonna be much slower. I'm gonna see if either with Robert or Misha driving, this thing can do something that starts with a six, which is 650s or something. I don't know. I, it, theoretically, it should be able to. That's a fast lap. You gotta be a fast driver, but they've got tens of thousands of laps between them on that track. They know it as good as anything. So whatever this car is capable of doing, I'm sure they'll be able to do it. Uh, up there, my 98 Super, you'll see I swapped that one back to uh, stock body. So I took the hood and the bumper off my 98 and put it on my 95, so the aftermarket ones, and put my factory pieces that were just sitting here collecting dust back on that car. So the 98 is good to go. If somebody wants to buy it, I know people have offered me lots of money for that car. Uh, I wasn't, I was, it's always one of those things like, somebody wants to buy it, but you're not ready to sell it, so it doesn't really materialize. I'm getting closer to being able to ready to sell that uh, now that my other Supra is done, so I'm excited there and I just have to put my headlights in. I used my headlights from my 98 on my 95 because we were filming Banging Gears out in Las Vegas and the 95 headlights were all crusty. The 98s were looking good. Uh, so I'll put those back in the car and that one's pretty much done and good to go. It's still 19,500 miles on the thing. It doesn't see any use, but uh, my other one with 141,000 miles, that thing is gonna be off to the races and I hope I've dialed it in or it will be dialed into the point where I can drive it with good frequency. Now, that's a car that's flex fuel as well. Now that I've got two flex fuel cars, I come up with a whole nother issue of why is it so difficult to buy flex fuel around here? And I'm gonna to talk to some local gas stations by me to see if I can sponsor the pump, so to speak, and get some E85 pumps uh, closer to where I live or closer to where I operate so that anyone can come down and, and load up some E85. Actually, I know guys at the gas station right over here got a gas station near my house. Uh, I'll see if I can make that work because just pull, pulling up to a pump and filling these things up will make my day significantly more convenient and then I get to use the horsepower levels that they spent the extra money to uh, access. Back here, my 360. This is going to be a big one. This is coming up soon. So all of these different things that I'm doing with my cars over the course of this year between the Nürburgring and uh, I want to do another project car challenge. I was talking to uh, Boosted Boys Kyle uh, when I was out in Vegas with him. I think that would be fun. Uh, I want to do another season or two of Sorted this year. I've got a lot of stuff, another $500 car challenge, all this stuff that I want to start cranking up. And as you see on the channel, I'm doing more shorts. I'm doing more frequency. And I want to get that upload schedule sort of on point. We've got Justin on the camera over here. And hopefully we can make something work where we're getting these three or four, maybe five times a week uploads going, and we've got some big structured content to anchor the channel going for the rest of the year, and you guys can keep up. One of those things, this car was just painted, um, and this car I'm going to now, I was like, I'll sell it. I'm like, you know what? I could sell it, but I could also swap it to a manual, and I think that was the, uh, that's going to be the game plan, is I'm going to swap this car over to a manual, because even if I do decide to sell it, say I sell it now as is, it's 26,000 miles, two owners, 2004, 360 Spider. Uh, I could sell it as is. I was driving it. I'm like, oh, I still enjoy it. I like the sound. I like the convertible. Uh, but I would like it more if it was a manual. But so would anybody else. So if I sell it for 90 grand now, I'd rather, I think these cars are the, the best entry level Ferrari you can get. I think they're going to be $150,000, $200,000 fast forward five or 10 years. So the money is safe there. So sitting on it or getting rid of it now, I'd want to get something else instead. Um, but I think switching it to a six-speed 
even if like I'm not going to lose the money, right? Even if I put another fifteen or twenty thousand dollars into making this a manual car, I'm going to get more than one hundred and ten out of it when I sell it. I'll probably get one hundred and twenty-five. Where this car in a factory manual will be selling for one seventy-five. Uh, I can easily sell it for 125, 130, 140. So that extra 15 or 20 thousand dollars will net me an additional benefit. So I don't see any downside to swapping this. That's probably going to be next month's project. Uh, I just got to make sure the parts are in order. So we've got the two Supras, we got the um, Ferrari, we've got the 458, which is here somewhere. My NSX is done. It just needs some paint on it. Let's go find. Come on, let's go, we're hiding over here. I don't know why we. I settled in there like I was going to wrap the video. We're not done. Uh, 458 doesn't need anything and then take this one on adventure drives down to Nashville so if you guys are coming on uh, the Nashville adventure drives that's going to be April 26th through the 30th uh, you'll be able to follow behind this car and hear some glorious noises because this thing does sound really nice um, the NSX right over here it does need uh, a little bit of paint and other than that that car is good to go I should do a, a a comparison between all of these cars, right? Maybe I'll do like a 60 to 150 pull in all these cars so you can see the difference in performance, especially with the F8 and then the SF90 when it comes in, because you'll really be able to gauge how fast the Corvette and then the Supras actually are compared to even these supercars and also how slow this NSX is. Because this NSX to go 60 to 150, I don't know if there's enough road around here to do that, but uh, th this, it's, it's, Sexy, just not very fast. So I think we covered it. We got the my three Ferraris. One, two, three, yeah. We got the Corvette, we got the two Supers, we got the NSX, and then the mini trucks and the Audis and the other cars. Not really important, the Teslas. Uh, there's the garage update now. There's the yearly plan. If you think we should be shipping that Corvette over to Germany, you let me know. I'm happy to do it as long as one of you thinks it's a good idea. Rob Peretti, thank you for watching. See you next time. Quick shout out to my own company, Adventure Drive. So we do these driving events all over the world. 2023 is no exception. We've got three trips coming up. One from Washington, D.C. to Nashville. This is from April 26th to the 30th. Then in July, we're doing a trip to Italy, which is going to be phenomenal. It's all northern Italy, starting and ending in Rome. You're going to love that one. And if you can't make it overseas or to the East Coast trip, you've got plenty of runway for the September 20th to 25th drive, starting in Napa Valley and ending in Las Vegas. That's going to be a great trip as well. Check them out. I put a link right below in the description of every video. Hope to see you out there.